you may or may not be relieved to know that this actually isn't about Margaret Thatcher. This is about the Drake equation. The Drake equation was something that was conjectured by the astronomer Frank Drake in 1961, which was an equation, which is a rather dignified name for it, which would work out how many civilizations there were in this galaxy from which we could detect signals. It looks like this. Okay, n is the number of civilizations in this galaxy from which we can detect signals. r is the rate of star formation. f p is the fraction of stars with planets. f no, sorry n e is the average number of life supporting planets per star. f l is the fraction of those that develop life. f i is the fraction that develops intelligent life. Fc is the number of civilized fraction of civilizations that release detectable signs of their existence, and F and L finally is the length of time during which detectable signs are released, and basically they're all multiplied together, and that's how it works. So basically, it's the number of uh, extraterrestrial civilizations that are out there, uh, which have got much to do with us. Now. First of all, you need to look at the stars suitable. Now, there is a diagram called the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram in which stars can be generally classified from the smallest red dwarfs up to the biggest blue hypergiants. This, on this diagram, it has generally been considered that the most habitable planets, habitable planets can only form around stars which are of medium size, in other words, yellow dwarfs like the sun. Uh, if they were too small then they wouldn't be warm enough and if they were too big they wouldn't last long enough. However, more recently it's been suggested that the red dwarfs, which are the commonest type of star, would be the most likely candidates for habitable planets because a planet which orbits so close to that star that it can't rotate except with one face facing that star all the time would actually be quite warm and about the temperature of this planet. However, those planets may also be ruled out by the fact that red dwarfs are flare stars. In other words, they get very, very unstable in the amount of radiation that they emit, and it could just zonk out the whole lot. So maybe not. The other thing is you could probably extend it up a little bit into the A-type stars, even though they don't quite live long enough, if life got lucky enough to evolve fast. And there's also the issue of whether... Uh, life can spread through the universe onto other stars uh, so it has already evolved and then it arrives at those other stars which are less long-lived next one along is the fraction with planets the fraction with planets is probably very high the recent kepler space mission and some other missions seem to have detected a very large number of stars with planets and in particular they've detected a particular kind of planet such as the hot Jupiters. Those are large stars that are very close to their planet, closer than Mercury and about the size of Jupiter or bigger, uh, which are obviously not suitable for life, but which are easy to detect. So it actually seems that there are actually quite a lot of stars which do have planets. And it may even be that all of them have planets, apart from the ones which can't form planets, such as the very hot blue giants, where they push stuff out so fast that they just clear their neighbourhood and there's nothing from the planets to form from. So that's that. The next one is Frank Drake worded it as planets per system that are suitable for the formation of life. Actually I think it's more planets or moons per system and that actually increases the chances considerably and I might say that those are and some of these will be wrong by the way on the on the film clip you're seeing now. Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Europa, Ganymede, Callisto, Titan and Enceladus. So that's eight or nine different worlds which have life on them. But the question is, is our system typical? One of the reasons why our system is quite friendly is that we have Jupiter, which orbits in a roughly circular orbit and um, clears the neighbourhood of dangerous rocks that might otherwise bombard the Earth all the time and make life impossible. And also there do appear to be quite a few star systems with hot Jupiters and those star systems probably don't have any Earth-like planets in them because of the effect of that hot Jupiter. 
The next one along is the fractions of light, fraction of planets or moons on which life actually appears. And there are quite a few of these. I actually think it's very, very likely that life will appear almost immediately either by panspermia, in other words, the spread through space, or by arising spontaneously on those planets because the Earth developed life almost as early as it possibly could. So it could even be all of the planets. However, some planets may not be able to support life because they are quite hostile and life can't develop even though it could survive on those planets because of the hostility of the environment such as very acidic or very hot very cold so life needs to develop in a friendly environment but it could become unfriendly later on without destroying it the next one long is intelligent life he doesn't actually mean intelligent life i think i think he actually means tool using life could be intelligent without being able to use tools because it doesn't have anything similar to hands for example or it might just not be interested it might be like mystical medical or it may just be that it doesn't have language so although each individual organism is intelligent it doesn't have much chance to pass that intelligence on to the next generation and everyone is isolated so also there's the issue that intelligence might actually be selected against because it takes such a long time to raise children that you can't reproduce quickly and you're just going to get wiped out because you abandon your children you're killed and then your children die whereas that doesn't happen in other species and in fact it's quite important that children the parents die before the children grow up otherwise they wouldn't survive so there's that um the next one along is releasing detectable signs of its existence that doesn't necessarily mean deliberate radio signals it could mean for example the appearance of complex fluoride compounds in the atmosphere as a form of pollution which would probably mean that there was a civilization on that planet and using technology or that there had been before it developed all the fluoride compounds that killed it and um, so forth but then of course there are electromagnetic signals such as radio waves the thing about those however is that they only spread to about a light year from this planet for a start so the idea that all these signals are going out way out tens of light years away from us is actually a myth they don't survive even as far as the nearest star to the sun because they get overwhelmed by the background hiss the other thing about that is that as civilization as technology gets more advanced because we now have digital signals rather than analog ones they become more similar to noise and harder to detect and for all we know they're not even using electromagnetic radiation but something called zeta rays that won't be discovered in the next 200 years on this planet or something so that's fairly dubious however there is deliberate transmission sometimes for example the arecibo telescope message which was supposed to give information on what we were like and finally there's the length of time during which detectable signals are released technology may get beyond that quickly as i explained or civilization might not last long enough because of things like environmental damage weapons of mass destruction or natural disasters however it might arise more than once i have a suspicion that there were intelligent dinosaurs and that that was partly responsible for the extinction of the dinosaurs and even if that's not true which i expect you won't think is true that does mean that it does at least seem plausible that an intelligent civilization could arise more than once so that's it for the time being um i'm going to do something on the fermi paradox as well and also something on the rare earth hypothesis um if you like this video please share rate comment and subscribe and if you dislike it please tell me why so i can improve and i'll see you tomorrow